Hey everybody, this video is going to show my maiden voyage with the LMI side bending jig. And what you can see here is I'm taking a piece of walnut that has a lot of um, interesting figuring in it and I'm just wetting it down here. Um, I'm resting it on a piece of aluminum foil and what you're trying to do here is not soak the wood. Uh, you just want to put a little bit of moisture in so that uh, when you apply the heat, uh, it creates a little bit of a steam box uh, type of effect. As I had just mentioned, um, once you wet the wood down, you close up uh, the wood inside the aluminum foil. And this will create steam once we put the uh, heating blanket on it. The second piece that this does is keeps the wood from getting stained by the uh, spring steel that is provided uh, as part of the kit. Um, it's a little bit strange that you know the spring steel itself uh, almost immediately uh, rusts. I think you know I would probably prefer something like uh, brass. I don't know if, if you know that's cost prohibitive, but um, you know nevertheless, you know the the aluminum foil does multiple things here, and so you know I've closed up this box, and now what I'm doing is measuring. Um, the amount I need to offset from you know the waist to the front. You know, the important thing about you know these types of jigs is you need to make sure um, that you have enough wood uh, on both sides of your midpoint. Now I start building the sandwich of silicone heating blankets, uh, thermocouples, and spring steel. And you know as part of the directions from LMI, they give you. Um, the order that you're supposed to put them in. Essentially, you get two thermocouples, which is going to measure how hot um, the full silicone blanket gets. And, you know, this one I'm showing here, which is just the uh, different waist um, blanket. And so uh, I could have used a few extra hands here, but, um, you know, it all works out in the end. So I put the, the last piece of spring steel on, and then... Um, you know, there's a couple of, of clips I just got from the dollar store um, that I use to hold the sandwich together as I put it into the jig. And so now I'm ready to slide it into the jig. I, you know, first line up the, the midpoint with the, um, the waist of the, the mold. And then I'm going to start uh, plugging in um, the first thermocouple. What you're going to do in the process is you heat up the waste and then you bend that first. And what you'll see here as I'm going around and just twisting this crank down, um, I probably took five or six minutes um, to do this step. Um, you know, this is the tightest curve on the um, entire project and so you know I wanted to make sure you know I, I took my time and didn't snap the wood. You can see somewhere in the middle here of, of this sped up clip I put mechanics gloves on. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that you're bending this at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and so it is you know essentially um, the same temperature as uh, your kitchen stove and so if you touch the metal uh, it is very hot. So now I've done the the center bend and I'm setting up the thermocouple uh, for the the full length blanket and then I'm also putting on um, the rollers. The rollers help here by you know going on the track that I'm putting the pin through and then it helps you roll the the wood down um, in the same way the crank uh, helps with the waist. And so I'm just using a, a socket wrench here to uh, add a little bit of attention um, to each of the rollers. And then um, you know, you'll see how I, I bend the sides in a second. With the heat turned on, um, you just start slowly rolling the sides down. The back curve um, is pretty gradual, and so you can roll it down um, without having to you know, spend a ton of time um, worrying about the, the snapping. Uh, certainly the front curve is a lot more steep. 
And that creaking sound uh, is the, the silicone going against the metal, um, not the wood. I think I might have had uh, a little bit too much tension on the roller. Um, you can see I'm not struggling, but um, it's not rolling down um, as, as smoothly as, as I might have expected. With the front roller in place, it's essentially the same uh, process as the back curve. You roll down a little bit. Um, you're really trying to feel that the wood, um, you know, gets kind of rubbery. And, um, you know, of course, if you're not sure, you can always uh, pause for a little bit. Um, and so, you know, you take a little bit of time, roll it down, and eventually you get to the bottom. The process to take it out of the mold is effectively just reversing the process um, that you did to put it in. And so um, first to take a socket wrench, um, loosen the tension on the rollers, um, bring the rollers back up, um, you know, release the pressure from the waist, and then just slide everything out. The whole process from start to finish took about 40 minutes. Um, the majority of that time was going back, looking at my notes, um, really thinking through what I was doing. But as I got to unwrap the sides, um, you know, the cost of the, the entire system um, was totally worth it. Um, you know, it's just like everything else in life. Um, you could spend your time doing it, you know, perhaps a lower cost way um, and spending more time or in this case, you know, I bought the jig from LMI um, and, and get a perfect result on the first time. And so, you know, it's a great feeling when I put the side uh, into the mold that I made and, you know, it, it stayed put, um, you know, it was very tight and kind of springy. And as you can see, there's no scorch marks or anything. Um, you can see the crotch figuring of the walnut side that I pick. And uh, like I said, it fits in, you know, really tightly uh, into the mold that I made, and um, you know, I repeat the process, and uh, I had, you know, the start of the rim of my first acoustic guitar. Thanks for watching.